On today's episode, we're going to take a liquid sample of compost extract and view it under our microscope, and then we're going to take a brief assessment of the quality of our material once we're done. I'm Kay the Guy, certified sole food web consultant. Some of you may be wondering why we haven't made content for a while. Well, the last two years I've been working on the consultant training program at the Soil Food Web School. This level of certificate allows me to go into the field and do remediation projects for clients. If you'd like to know more about my final project that I did for graduation to become a consultant for the Soul Food Web, go ahead and leave a comment below. This is my 30 gallon funnel tank that I use to make teas and extracts. Now let me briefly explain the difference between the two. When you're making a tea, you typically will add your water, an aeration source like a pump, and then also foods so that the organisms can grow. This process will typically take between 18 to 24 hours and you'll usually see a bell curve of how your organisms will start to grow and then they'll peak at one moment and then they'll start to drop off after that. That's typically a pretty complicated process but for today we're going to do a really simple extract which is a much easier way to make an inoculation for soil. So the first thing that you need in order to make compost extract is a high grade compost material. Now this compost is from a colleague of mine who is also a consultant at the Soul Food Web. And what this compost is, is considered what they call biocomplete. So what biocomplete means is that this material meets the minimum or exceeds the minimum of all the beneficial organisms that we require for plant growth. This includes the bacteria, the fungi, the protozoa, and the nematodes as well. And you can see the material is a real dark brown color and it smells a lot like, like soil from the forest. Now this is about two to three gallons of material gonna be used in our 30 gallon tank. You can certainly do a smaller scale version of this in a five gallon bucket with much less material. If you guys would like me to show you how to do it in a smaller scale in a five gallon bucket, also leave those in the comments below. So first we're gonna start by filling our tank up. Now just a moment ago, I did allow all the warm water that was sitting in the hose to get fully purged. The reason why I want to do this is because I want the coldest water possible. The reason why it's really important that we use cold water is that cold water will have the highest percentage of dissolved oxygen within the water. And we want that because organisms are aerobic and those aerobic organisms need the oxygen in the water. So cold water, always better. So one important note about your water is that our water is well water, which is typically really good for making teas and extracts. But if your water system has any chlorine or chloramine in it, which ours does, you want to filter that out. We use a pre-filter and we use a carbon filter in order to make sure that all the chlorine and chloramine is not in our water. If you don't have a method of doing that, you can use specifically for something this size, you can use a pinch of humic acid and that humic acid will dissolve and bind with your chlorine and chloramine, making it inert or making it essentially non-damaging for all your essential microbes. Now we're gonna add our compost to our 400 micron bag. Specifically, this is a 400 micron bag. You don't want anything finer than this because your nematodes will not make it through the bag if it's any finer than 400 microns. So it's important that you use this type of screen material in order to make sure that all of your organisms, including the nematodes, are able to release into the liquid. Now while it's filling, we can add our air. So we're gonna go ahead and turn on our air pump. So our air pump right now is on this half inch tubing. And this tubing actually goes down with this rod to the very bottom of the tank. Now it's important that it goes to the bottom because we want this rolling boil to go as, as far through the material as possible to get as much oxygenation and agitation so we get all those microbes off the material into the water. You can do these in small applications like a five gallon bucket. You can do it in a 30 gallon tank like we have here or this 250 gallon batch like we're doing here in order to remediate this soil that's having an issue with ring fungus. All right, now that our tank is full, we're gonna go ahead and drop our bag in and just attach it to this metal here. We'll run this for about 10 to 15 minutes in order to get all of these microbes off this material in large enough numbers. After that, we're gonna go ahead and take our sample and look and see what we have under the microscope. So now our material's been brewing right now for about 12 to 13 minutes. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our bag out, but we're gonna leave the air pump running to keep everything nice and mixed. We'll allow it to drain just a little bit, and we can take this material and we can actually put it near the base of a tree or bush or a mulched area near 
flowers, any type of thing that you would normally put potting soil at. If you're having a tree that's having a little bit of an issue, you can always sprinkle it around the base of that tree. When I take my sample, I don't want to take it from just the surface and I don't really want the bottom where a lot of sediment may collect. I want to go right across the middle. At this point, we're going to go ahead and take our sample and put it onto our microscope slide and then check it out underneath our microscope. Remember to check out part one to how to take a sample. And you can click the card at the upper corner of the video here to check out that video. Now what we're looking at first here is a flagellate. It's kind of hard to see. You can see it here in this lower area, now in the center. That kind of bumbling motion. The size of the flagellates here, uh, kind of the indication. Also their movement is an indication of what they are. Next we have a protozoa, a testate amoeba specifically. And you can see the test on the right hand side. There's some little bit of bacteria inside of it. Here's another type of testate amoeba. You can see at the top there, it's mouth parts. Uh, here's another example of another one. The mouth parts are on the bottom side. Uh, it's usually the flat end of the egg shape. Here we have the tail end of some fungi. You can tell that it's beneficial because of the color and shape. Here's another test date amoeba. You can see the test on the bottom. Now when you're looking at our fungi, we can see some septation, um, squared off ends. Here's a larger piece that was first at 40x magnification, then 100x magnification, and then we get real close with 400x total magnification. And you can see here the color, the uniform diameter, the branching of this piece of fungi here is all the signs that it is beneficial. And this is what we really like to see in our samples, that everything is looking good and these are gonna be really good for our plants. Now we can go ahead and add this liquid to any of our garden beds, pots, or at the base of any of our trees. Great thing about this liquid is that it's fully organic, so you can use it for ornamental or productive plants for consumption. Let us know if you found value in the video by dropping a like below and subscribe so you don't miss any of our new Soul Food Web content.